Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. This is the time of year for doing some Christmas crafts. So what I'm going to do is show you how to fashion up some of these uh, reindeer for the holidays. I made these out of some common 2x4s and I got about 12 of them out of an average 2x4. Now this was originally done by uh, Woodworkers Guild of America. They did a really quick video of it a few years ago and I've taken it perhaps a step or two further. And you can reach uh, Woodworkers Guild at www.goa.com Woodworkers Guild of America.com uh, So it's abbreviated as www.goa.com I did a previous video on this and I'll put a link below to that video and this video um, takes it a step or two further to give you some more information. Now to see a quick video of this, I'll put a link in the description below so you can get through this quicker than what this one is. But for full detail, watch this video through. So let's get to this project. Well, here I've cut up a couple of two by fours and cut them into these eight inch long blocks for making these reindeer and out of one 2x4 that's 8 foot long, 8 inches, I can get 12 of these out of a 8 foot 2x4. So don't mean to sound redundant but that's what I did and next what I'm going to do is to square up these edges on these so that they're good and square. Then I'll trace my patterns onto these and cut them out at the bandsaw. Then I'll be doing the sanding too. So. I'll get on with this and get all these done up, but I won't bore you as I do all these. Now, after I've got all of these cut on one edge here, I'm going to adjust my fence over slightly and then come back and do the other edge on these so I'll see you back when I get done with this okay so I've got them all squared up on one side here and one of the things I learned as I was doing that throwing up a lot of sawdust was that I get a lot of sawdust all over me and into the pockets of my bib apron so I decided to put on my turning schmuck because there's no pockets here and it lets things all fall away because it's rather smooth. That's why they make them for turning. And be good for useful for making a lot of sawdust at the table saw too. So what I'm going to do is get the uh, other edge side here squared up and then I'm going to go through all of these again and get them piled back over on this side. And then I can start putting my pattern on and go to the bandsaw to cut it out. So. Okay, here with these blocks that I've cut up and uh, got squared up on the edges and so forth, now I'm marking my patterns on these with a, the patterns that I made. And you can see how on these, I try and lay these patterns out as to avoid any knots and imperfections as much as I can. And so I get that squared up. Then on the ends, I turn it up and I have to trace on the pattern here for the side pattern and like this is the legs, this is the horns on the side, the horns at the top, leg and body portion at the bottom. So I have to make sure I line the horns up with where the horns are on this. So and also what I like to do is I like some of these to be facing left and right. So what I'll do is alternate my pattern here on this so that it goes this way or like on some of these others it goes the other way. So I've got some alternating here so this will go left, this will go right, and left and right, and left, and this one will go right. And you kind of tell that you got an alternating pattern going on because these should be opposing each other all the time. Also I notice that this uh, in here kind of looks like a Christmas Christmas ornament shape so 
that's kind of a good indicator too to help me keep on track so I don't get things too mixed up so anyways uh, that's a step I'm doing here then once I get all these marked up and laid out then I'll be going to the bandsaw and getting these cut out okay, here at the bandsaw I'm going to cut out these patterns and I'll trace around these lines that I laid out for the pattern I got two 3 8 inch holes that I put on on this and that's to help me in the tight radius of these different cuts that I need to make. So that will help out. Now what I'll do is go ahead and cut these. And usually I cut, I start cutting between the horns here and then between the legs here. Get those cut out. Then I'll cut this long length here around to the back of the tail and down. And then lastly I'll cut this long part, narrow part, on this edge here last and then I'll put these pieces back together and tape them up. So I'll get this cut. Now I'll do between the legs here. I'll put these two pieces together here that I cut out and I'll wrap it with tape to hold it together so I can then come back and cut this other pattern here. Got one here where I've done this already. Got the tape wrapped around it. Now this time I'm using clear packing tape instead of masking tape so I can see through it and see my pattern and the lines to follow here. I think packing tape is Quite a bit cheaper than blue masking tape or any masking tape for that matter. And uh, doesn't leave as much sticky goo behind either. So anyways, I'll go ahead and adjust my bandsaw guides up. Make sure I clear. Then I'll cut out this part here. And we'll have a finished reindeer out of this. Okay, so take the rest of this off. And I have a finished reindeer, three-dimensional. Next step will be sanding this up, then doing some staining or painting, and putting on the eyes and the horns and all that stuff to make it look a little more realistic, but yet crafty. So here at the oscillating sander, I've got this rigid oscillating sander that does spindles, and it's also got a flat belt on there too. I sand these and I use the smallest uh, spindle sander I can that fits between the horns here. That's my narrowest spot to do any sanding in. And the feet are much larger so it fits pretty good. And the way I sand these is I you know sand between the legs, sand between the horns, then sand all around the outer edges as this side here is flat. Then, now that's sanded, then I flip it on its side. If I flip it on this side, it sits flat. But on this side, it does not. So, on this side, I can get it to fit around and do all these contours uh, very well. Then along the back side of that. So, that's how I will do it. And I'll go through this.
So that gets all these sides and edges sanded pretty smooth. I usually go over it a few times uh, to get all the saw marks sanded out. Then it'll usually leave some uh, fur or edges from the wood along these edges here. So I just go over it with a, you know, about a 220 grit sandpaper and clean up any of these edges like you can see right here. Uh, I've got some fur on there and it's just a matter of cleaning it up with the sandpaper a little bit and it gets it fairly clean. So go around all the edges and clean all that up. Then got a good reindeer. Next step for that will be staining and painting and doing some of the other parts. Now I've got all these sanded to a final sanding so I can start finishing them and uh, doing all the other painting and decorating on them. So we'll get that done. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is take a can of stain, whatever I happen to have handily available, as long as it's kind of a dark brown. This one happens to be a red mahogany, so that'll work. And I just pry this off with a you know can opener or whatever you can use to get the lid off your stain. Then stir it up, get it stirred up well, so you got a good mix going. Then I use these sponge brushes and I'll dip it in and start staining on these. And I try to stain these and I'll start out just about halfway up the head between the antlers and the nose. And careful of how much I put on there because as I stain these and put that on there, the wood tends to wick up the stain further up. So I want to try and keep that to a minimum so it doesn't go up too far the horns because I want to keep the horns of a different color. So I'll do this. Get going on that. So I start out and you can see it's wicking up there a bit. Then get around the sides and the back so I can get kind of an even line going there. Then I'll finish going uh, all around the body with this with the exception of the horns. I hold it by the horns here to keep my fingers out of the way of the stain. Get between the legs here. Down the other side. Back. And just kind of wipe this smoothly along to avoid any globs or anything like that. It's evenly applied. Yeah, let's see. Now I gotta do the front part here yet. Like I said, go over it and get it wiped down so it's smooth and you don't have any globs on there. So that basically completes one. Uh, the feet. Undo those. I'm not going to worry about sticking on the paper here too much. So. I'll set that aside and then start working on the next one. Like I've got about 36 of them here to do. So I won't bore you with doing all those. So I'll cut out here and then cut back in when these have dried and I'm ready to do the horns. Okay, so these bodies have dried, so now I can paint or stain the antler part, which will come out in a lighter tone of uh, brown. And what I'm using for this stain here is a golden oak and foam brush. And what I'll do is get some on the brush and 
I'll paint the inside or stain the inside with the antlers first. And I try and keep this tilted kind of down like this um, to try and avoid any runs. I noticed before if I was holding this up too much and working like this, I was getting runs down the back side of it. So trying to hold this uh, in such a manner that avoid anything running down the body. Not that it's really going to show up that all much or look that bad, but I'm going to avoid it. Might as well. Yeah, I'll just get all this uh, covered up. Tops of the antlers covered. And there I've got finished uh, with the antler part. And next step after this will be painting on the eyes and the nose. Okay, so here I'm painting the whites on for the eyes. And the way I do this, I used to use these testers, uh, a white, black, and red uh, model paints for doing this. But now they've come out with these uh, Sharpie paint pincher. And various colors and it's an oil based paint that these are. And I'll put a link to these down below. I think I got these on Amazon. And what I do is you, you shake them up, get it mixed up pretty good, uh, test it out, get some spots going, get some paint flowing. And then I take and paint this onto these like this. Put in the whites for the eyes. Got like that. So then the next step after these dry, is I'll put black dots in the middle of these white dots to represent the pupils of the eyes. And after that, I'll paint red on the noses. Okay, now that I got all the whites painted on all of these, the whites of the eyes. Now I can put in the pupil with a black marker here, uh, same kind as I had before. And what I'll do is just basically put a little black dot in the middle of the white spots. And that gives them the pupil, as you can see there. I'll go on and get the rest of these done. As I did with the eyes before, I'm going to put on a red nose with one of these red paint markers and I just put a little bit right on the tip of the nose here on the front and I've got it looking like that. And that completes uh, all the painting once I get done with all the rest of these. Now I'll start tying ribbons around the necks. Okay, so we've got all the eyes painted and the noses painted. Kind of sounds like taking a vote, the eyes and the noses. And uh, they got this kind of look on them, as you can see. And kind of looks like, uh, what you say, deer in the headlights. Wow. <laughs> kind of an odd look, but that's what it works. And what I'll do is tie these ribbons on here now. This one I've got the blue and the red on it. And I'm going to take another here and demonstrate how I do it. Uh, maybe this time I'll do a white and a green. I've got these ribbons that I pick, picked up. Uh, get these at the local craft store. So I just pull off a little bit of a length. Cut it. And I'm going to tie this on here and form a bow. Kind of like tying a shoelace. Uh, it's a basic skill we learn in kindergarten. <laughs> we'll tie this like this. A little more difficult with a ribbon than it is with a shoelace, so a little more of a challenge. Put this here. Okay, so we've got a nice bow forming there. We can kind of pull this in. Shape it a little bit smaller if we like, get it good and tight, and then we can coil. Uh, another trick we learned in kindergarten is how to coil these uh, ribbons with our scissors to make them 
do like a curly cue. Let's go like this. With the tag end, I guess, as they call this, of the ribbon. Okay. So we got kind of like that look. Kind of get it arranged a little bit. Then I'll take a piece of white now. I go through a lot of the red. Uh, now the white, let's find the tag end here. So we can get that. And get a little bit off of that. Now this one I'm not going to tie a bow on it. I'm just going to tie the ribbon around the neck just below the other bow and curly cue the ends on it. Like that and make sure I don't get this bow from the other one underneath there. So like that. Do it again, make sure it stays tied tight. Okay. Cut off some of the excess. Give it a curly cue. Gotta get a hold of one in there. And there we have reindeer with the bows on it. And I'll go through all the rest of these here and do the same thing. This is how we make them. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you got some inspiration to make some Christmas crafts. If you did, please give me a like and give me a thumbs up. And share it with your family, friends, and fellow craftspersons. Also, we'd like to hear what you like to see. So, please give us your comments. And please subscribe so that you won't miss anything that we have coming out in the future. Be sure to hit that bell icon so you won't miss anything. So, hey, if they like to say on the Red Green Show, the ladies don't find you handsome, at least they should find you handy. Thank you.